and helping Iraqis achieve a united, stable, and free country will require our sustained commitment. We pose a continuing and imminent threat to the American people. So we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> Did it Will you and President Trump organize an international coalition to remove Assad? Those steps are underway. Trump made the wrong choice. And we should be able to say that without derailing the Trump train. We can be pro-Trump without blindly putting all of our faith in him. Let's not be like the left, letting Obama's or Hillary's views decide our own, regardless of what they say and do. Trump was elected on his America First platform, and he made a promise that America was done policing the world. He also said that we need to support Christians globally, yet firing $6,800,000 missiles at one of the only secular states in the Middle East, well, that suggests otherwise. For years, Trump publicly spoke out against the war in Iraq and against the military intervention in Syria, openly admitting and chastising the US for the role its foreign policy played in the creation of ISIS. Known for butchering its way through Iraq, came out in 2013, when Assad used chemical weapons against his own people and Obama sought to increase support for the rebels, it was Trump who was a lone wolf warning the West to stay out of Syria. And more interestingly, he said, and I quote, do not attack Syria, fix the USA. So why is Trump making such a monumental U-turn? Many avid Trump zealots might approve of such a gung-ho approach to foreign policy. But in Europe, where we can really feel the effects of the refugee crisis, we are growing more and more wary of Western interventionism. Closing the borders isn't simply an immigration policy. It means looking inwards and fixing your own country first. So just what the hell happened? Did Trump buckle under the pressure of his first crisis? Was he manipulated by the deep state? Was the missile strike a clever ploy to quell media speculation about his ties to Russia. The truth is, we can only speculate. Mainstream media news sources are even claiming that the president just could not bear to see his daughter moved by images of dying children. You know, those images. The ones where something just doesn't seem quite right. The truth is, we don't know that Assad was behind this attack. And considering the source of the reports, the rebel-linked white helmets, and given the footage, which raises more than a few questions, it seems like the attack warranted at least further investigation. Not just some sort of knee-jerk unilateral decision. And just what is the alternative to Assad anyway? Jihadi rebels? a theocracy, or even a total caliphate? At least Assad's Syria is a secular one. And the attacks on Christians recently celebrating Palm Sunday? At least they didn't come from the government. It's also been suggested that Assad could be removed and that the infrastructure of his administration remain. That some sort of peaceful transition of power might be easy or even possible. Some people, clearly unfamiliar with Middle Eastern politics, have even called for some sort of two-state solution. And now, Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State, has claimed openly that he and Trump are working together to remove Assad. Have these people learned nothing? Western interventionism and nation-building do 
not work. Trump himself has even said so. It's led only to further instability, wasted lives, wasted money, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Sunni Shia bloodshed, and the refugee crisis, which has brought so much turmoil and devastation to Europe. And now it seems a warmongering neocon, deep state, has finally gotten its wish. Trump was supposed to be the change that American foreign policy so desperately needed. And now we need to hold him to that. Thanks for watching. If you like that and you want to see more from me, Gavin, Faith, and Tommy, then subscribe to The Rebel Edge.